And we're back at Minneapolis North High School as we continue our coverage of the Above the Rim Classic. Game two of day one about to take place. Featuring the Class A state champion, Minneapolis North Polars and the Brooklyn Center Centaurs, an up and coming team in Class 2A. And I'm Mike Beaton and we're just gonna get started with this game. We had a short warm up time for the two teams to try to speed things up after a marathon battle between Michelle Clark Prep and Red Lake. Minneapolis North coming in at five and one. They have not lost since the season opener to Apple Valley and that includes a win over Edina Minnehaha Academy and runaway wins in conference play. Brooklyn Center was undefeated until their most recent encounter with Tatino Grace, and that one was settled in overtime with the Eagles winning 67-65. Both schools had five and one records. North, the number one team in Class A. Brooklyn Center, the number nine team in Class 2A. And for Brooklyn Center, their ascension has been slow but steady. They were 17 and 12 last year, got a little more attention, and here they are, hoping to make some noise in the 2A field. In a bracket where Minnehaha is a front runner, but you've got Caledonia, among others. Have the starters for you quickly. Brooklyn Center will start Deshaun Pickford, number three, the senior guard. Devontae Prince, number 11, the senior forward. Number 23, Rudwan Tahir, the freshman guard. Number 24, Quentrell Douglas, the sophomore forward. And number 25, Lukai Patterson, the freshman guard. Minneapolis North will start Jaquan Sanders Smith, number four, the senior guard. Takai Hines, number 11. Number 13, I should say, the junior center. Number 15, Taylor Johnson, the junior guard. Number 32, Oldell Wilson, the fourth, the junior center. And number 35, Isaac Johnson, the senior guard. Takai and his twin brother, Decoy, both transfers from Indiana. Their mother going through some brain cancer treatment at Mayo Clinic. And so the Heinz twins opted to follow her. Taylor Johnson, you may know as him as the younger brother of Tyler Johnson, who just picked up a championship bowl trophy. Gophers winning the Holiday Bowl, although there is some turbulence expected with what's going on with the football program. I won't discuss that too much here because that's college football, this is high school basketball. I don't like to creep too much into that kind of territory. But Minneapolis North, the heavy favorite to win in Class A, and I spoke with Trent Witts, as I usually do before North games I cover, and he said, this is a team that's still trying to figure themselves out. Remember, a lot of players are crossovers for football, and they only had about a week between the end of the football season and the start of basketball, so Trent Witts said, the legs are still getting under these players, most of them, four of the starting five, to be precise, 
were on that football team that won its first state championship in school history, giving Charles Adams the distinction of being the first African-American coach to win a state football tournament. North becoming a hotbed of athletics once again. And Brooklyn Center, they commit a backcourt violation. This is another high quality test. They'll get Michelle Clark prepped tomorrow. Led by Matthew McAllister, Brooklyn Center. A doormat for many years in the Tri-Metro. Changing things up here. Again, the number nine team picking up five straight wins to start the year. They beat Bloomington Kennedy, Milwaukee Vincent over at Johnson. Part of the East Metro Showcase. And recently defeated the Charter Stars 108 to 33. We're just underway here. Isaac Johnson, the team's leading score at 22.4. Odell Wilson, the fourth behind him at 16.3. And he averages nearly nine rebounds a game. Those are gonna be your notables on that end. For Brooklyn Center, they have five players averaging double digits in scoring, much like North did a year ago. Jaquan Sanders-Smith missing. Taylor Johnson chasing down the offensive rebound. And while North is the favorite, the reason why Trent and the others feel like there's a lot of work to be done, the leadership they lost to graduation. You had Tyler Johnson, Jameel Jackson, and Patrick Dembley as Jaquan Sanders-Smith gets our offense started with a runner. And that takes time to rebuild, especially when you have to wait for most of your team to finish their football commitments. Brooklyn Center, they're young, but they have a lot of talent. Dakai Hines will scoff at that, though, as he sends Rudwan Tahir shot into the bleachers behind the north bench. The leading scorer is Adrian Sprinkles with 18. Lukai is the leading scorer among the starters tonight at 16 and a half per game. There he is with the touch. Here's Douglas. Kicks out. Three on the way. Is strong from Devontae Prince. Offensive rebound. Baseline J is short. Odell Wilson with the leak out. Isaac gets there in time, and the Western Illinois recruit gets on the board. Red Lake fans, I should say, and players intently watching this one, scouting Minneapolis North tomorrow. Taylor Johnson tips the rebound to himself, but he can't skip over to Isaac Johnson, and North commits the turnover. Quentrell Douglas, the leading rebound, or one of the leading rebounders. Devontae Prince, close to a double-double, averaging 14 points and eight assists. Lukai Patterson, averaging 7.6 assists per game. So he will be the facilitator. And one thing with a packed house, or almost packed, you get kids that go up and down the bleachers. Not much you can do in high school. Polar's lead 4-0. And that's going to be a push foul as Isaac Johnson was trying to trap Rudwan Tahir into a backcourt violation. Johnson bails him out. Pickford to Prince. To here has it. Used up the dribble. Can't get the finger roll to drop. Wilson lost the rebound and an easy layup for Quentrell Douglas. Isaac Johnson lost it. Finds Biggs. Foul before the shot. Biggs is the nickname for Odell Wilson. 
He's affectionately known by that name here at Minneapolis North. Sanders Smith out to Johnson for three. Off the mark. Wilson looked like he might have gotten a push off, but the rebound goes to to here, and he gets the fast break layup. And we're tied at four. Taylor Johnson. Pass intercepted. Hines with the block. Tahir will not get a second fast break play in. Johnson with a skip to Hines, and he's rejected. Johnson fires a deep shot. That's off. Wilson went up for the rebound, and I believe Deshaun Pickford will be called for the foul. No, it goes against Wilson. Two sets of cheerleaders here. You don't see that often where the visiting team sends their cheerleaders on holiday break, no less. Patterson. 15-footer is short. Rebound Johnson. Sander Smith tries to skip it, and it goes off our camera guy, Ibrahim. To here, drains the runner. Brooklyn Center with an early 6-4 lead. Johnson to Biggs. Post up and scores. Getting pretty noisy here. In the north side of Minneapolis, Wilson deflected the bounce pass but cannot grasp it for the steal. So Brooklyn Center will hang on to it. Pace of this one considerably quicker than our prior game. Far fewer fouls being called, which certainly helps. Pickford to Patterson. Prince has it. Prince. Lost control. Good defense by Hines as he used up the dribble and got caught in midair. And of course, we have to mention North's longtime head coach, Larry McKenzie, five time state tournament champion, Hall of Fame member. Wilson beats his coverage and drives in. Eight to six in favor of North. Pass is stolen by Isaac Johnson. He'll take it all the way. And North on a quick burst here. Patterson to Douglas. Nice ball movement, and Rudwan Sahir goes in for the layup. Taylor Johnson, fast break, got it. Don't blink, don't breathe, or you might miss something. Three ball. Unable to hit from the wing was number 22 for the Centaurs, and that is Adrian Sprinkles, the team's leading scorer.
Sanders Smith, runner is short. Wilson is there for the finish. Pickford to Prince and he's fouled. One thing that North had to deal with after a resilient three-year journey to get a state tournament title in basketball with Larry McKenzie and crew. Those first two years, you may recall, had a couple of heartbreaking losses to Maranatha in the section final, both by two points. Last year, North walloped the field all the way from the first round of sections to the final game in state. And their dominance was the subject of scorn from the casual folks, the mainstream guys who maybe pay attention only at state tournament time, who thought North was too good to be in Class A, failing to recognize the journey it took for them to get there. Sprinkles will go to the line for two. Centaurs went 17 and 12 last year. Off to a five and one start. Would love to keep that going. Then we'll take on Michelle Clark Prep tomorrow. Two high quality tests. Adrian Sprinkles, as we noted, the team's leading score, averaging 18 a game. Also averages 3.8 rebounds a game. And Patrick Dembley in attendance for this one. It's 14 to 10. Isaac Johnson goes up, no. Taylor Johnson, rebound. Player in his face, he can't put it in. Deshaun Pickford. Comes up with it. Sprinkles in trouble. Good ball movement once more, and Patterson draws the foul. Lukai Patterson, a freshman, as we noted, a pretty young Brooklyn Center team when you look at some of the talent that starts for them. Two freshmen and a sophomore. So they have some pieces to put together a sustained run. 14 to 12. Brooklyn Center tried the pressure and that allowed Odell Wilson to set up on the other end. Biggs with eight points. Prince out to Sprinkles. And Sprinkles couldn't make it rain. Patterson can't get the putback. Sprinkles another O board. And a third chance here for the Centaurs. Patterson, spin move, kicks out. Marquise Holloman with the pick. Here he comes. Officials waiting for the ruling. It's a blocking foul. That should count the basket. Marquise Holloman, a senior. The son of Crystal Flint, the head coach of the girls team here at Minneapolis North and I might be smelling a recreational drug. I'm not sure, but there's a pretty strong scent around this area of the bleachers. Holloman cannot complete the three-point play. Nasir el -Amin on the floor for the pullers. Pullers lead by six. Douglas, use up the dribble and gets called for traveling. 
Now, we mentioned in the first game, Minneapolis North, one thing they aren't fond of is the inclusion of Fair and Hope Academy to the Minneapolis City Conference. And that's not because they don't want more teams, but for them, Hope Academy will field a varsity team next year. It takes away some of the high-quality non-conference games they often seek. As you know, North stacks their schedule as hard as they can. And this is quite a leg they will take for the holiday break. They get Red Lake tomorrow. They will go to Sioux Falls on Saturday to play Sioux Falls O'Gorman. They get Hopkins in February as Isaac Johnson misses a three. That game was supposed to take place earlier this month. It was rescheduled due to inclement weather. And another big game on their schedule. They host the number one team in 2A, Caledonia, on January 28th. So as always, a strong assortment of high-quality non-conference games. They do host Rush for Peterson, a team that has struggled a bit as Minneapolis North calls timeout, which will give me more time to break down their upcoming schedule. They'll take on Heritage Christian in a section game. And they will end the season at Hopkins, presuming they don't win the Minneapolis City Conference. And the prospects of that happening are as likely as the Vikings making the playoffs. Okay, maybe not that extreme, but Minneapolis North doesn't seem to have a lot of competition standing in their way. They crush Minneapolis South and fair. They will go on the road to Central Minnesota Christian, the number three team in Class A, and Rushford Peterson they will host in what has been an annual series between the two, but the Trojans of Rushford Peterson have fallen off a bit. It will be a rematch of sorts of the Class A State Football Championship. North knocking off Rushford Peterson to win that crown. Douglas lost it. Isaac Johnson picks it up. He's in trouble. Last touch by the Centaurs. 9-18 left in the first half. 18-12 to the score. Sander Smith. Skip pass to Wilson through the needle and in. Biggs with 10. Sprinkles to Douglas. Brooklyn Center kicks out here. Scramble for the ball, won by the Centaurs. And Quentrell Douglas turns a potentially broken play into a pair. Taylor Johnson on the other end. He attacks, scores, and one. As we noted before, North looking for that go to player. As with Tyler Johnson last year, Patrick Dembley, Jameel Jackson, you had some flashiness, you had some clutch playmakers, and that's not to say the current roster lacks any of that, but they feel they're searching for that go-to figure. Who will step up when you need a big play? They haven't quite found it, but that's what these games are all about. Taylor Johnson missing the three-point play. So North struggling a little bit from the free throw line, but they lead in the more important category, the score. They're up by eight. Takai Hines with the block. North hoping to move up to Class 3A next year when the state goes through its reclassification phase. Douglas to Tahir. And the Centaurs back off. 
Taylor Johnson steals it after a mishandle by Brooklyn center. Odell Wilson has a chance for a three-point play. Minneapolis North on a surge here. Boudouin to here. Call for his first personal foul. And Biggs has 12 points. Again, he averages 16.3. He's been with this program since eighth grade. The year Larry McKenzie came in and began the refit. The only thing North hasn't done thus far is hit a free throw. Patterson, the skip, and Sprinkles can hit the three. Rudwan Tahir was fouled as he was going for the rebound. Foul was on Nasir Laminas first. Sprinkles used up the dribble, needs help. Kicks back out. Deep three. Swish. Devontae Prince gets on the board, and that's one way to break his own. Larry McKenzie telling his team to go. Wilson, a strong first half thus far. Isaac Johnson goes out to Hines. Mid range day is way too strong, but look who's there. Wilson, although he can't get that one to go in. And a dead ball rebound to the Centaurs. Brooklyn Center in the Tri Metro. So once they're done with this event, they actually have another big game in non conference play at Park Center, a team who's surging themselves, one of the top 10 teams in 4A. They will go back to Johnson to play the Governors on January 7th. And they will take on Grand Rapids at Super 60 event at Hopkins. Another triple from Prince as he nails one from the left corner. And in a hurry, Brooklyn Center has closed the margin to four. Hines reaches over for the putback, and that's what a 6-8 frame can do. 26-20 our score. Prince used up the dribble, Sprinkles, dribble drive, and the finish. Adrian Sprinkles with his first field goal. Johnson, out to Sander Smith, thought about it. Three second violation, Brooklyn Center wanted to travel, but not the case. They get the turnover. As the Eagles file out. Prince out to Sprinkles. A lot of time in this one. No need to hurry. Patterson back to to here with six points fires and he's fouled he'll shoot two oh. foul is charged to Dakai Hines his first Hines 
And to here, we'll shoot two. Al Nolan, one of the assistant coaches for the Brooklyn Center Centaurs, if that name sounds familiar, he was a part of the Gophers staff as a player a few years ago. Two makes both free throws. Brooklyn Center calls timeout. The Centaurs, six of six on the free throw line. The Pullers, 0 of three. And as we uh, continue with the coaching staff, there's an amusing one, or amusing name of sorts, for the Polars, Brandon Mitchell. He is not related to Tisa Mitchell, although Tisa has a husband who goes by the name of Brandon Mitchell. Uh, Tisa, a Minneapolis North alum, won a state championship, a pair of them actually, with Faith Johnson Patterson in 1998-99. She's part of the North coaching staff in her second season along with Crystal Taylor and Crystal Flint. The North girls on an extended break. They'll return to action in January. They're four and four, had a couple of overtime losses, but they are making some strides with a primarily young group. Holloman back on the floor for the Pullers. He has a younger brother, Trey Juan, who everyone expects to be a stud in the years to come. He'll get some playing time in lopsided games. He's a seventh grader, so no pressure with the talent and depth that North possesses. Sanders Smith, deep three, is strong. And the Centaurs will not get the rebound. Kick ball, so North will hang on to it. But the Centaurs on a 10-2 run over the last few minutes to close a 10-point gap to two. Five oh three remains. Another kick, and it will stay here. Isaac Johnson. Traveling violation, he lost control. Sprinkles, kicks out, Prince for three. He's at two already, will not hit a third. Almost got the bounce though. Sandra Smith lost the ball to Douglas. Sprinkles with a fast break layup. And the Centaurs have come back from 10 down to tie it up at 26. Johnson, baseline J, he's fouled, will shoot two. The foul will be charged to Patterson. Isaac Johnson, again the team's leading score, averaging 22 a game. Twenty-two point four to be precise. Taking more of the offensive responsibilities as North doesn't quite have the offensive depth they did a year ago. But in Class A, that's less of a concern. Sprinkles for three and he's fouled by Wilson. Oh, 
Adrian Sprinkles, a sophomore, six foot two. Some healthy offensive numbers. And chips in with rebounds and assists where he can. And I'll tell you what's keeping Brooklyn Center hanging around. The free throw shooting. That's their first miss. Patterson will go in for Douglas. Sprinkles makes two of three. And we're tied again at 28. Holloway gets the escape with Johnson. Johnson too strong on the layup attempt. And the rebound by number 13. We'll get his name in a moment. Prince cannot finish the drive. Sprinkles almost had the rebound. But there's a difference between almost and for sure. Kirkula Collins is number 13 for the Centaurs. Three forty-seven on the clock in the first half. Sander Smith. They swing it around, and Taylor Johnson drains the three from the corner. Taylor Johnson up to seven. And Price, or Prince, was fouled. He'll be going up to shoot two. Devontae Prince making his first trip to the free throw line. As Brooklyn Center making use of being in the bonus. Centaurs 10 of 11. Wilson, no basket, he traveled. He walked and forgot to dribble. And that's unfortunate because North had a fast break play and that is wiped away. As we said, this is a North team rediscovering its identity as they look to supplant the production and the leadership vacated by the graduation of three high quality seniors. What a dribble drive and a move by Douglas for two. And they almost get the steal. Sander Smith will fire an elbow J, come up short. Brooklyn Center holds the lead here. They trail by 10, 24-14 early in the first half. Now it's 32-31. Isaac Johnson will shoot two. And he's angry, he wanted 
that ball to go in. He thought he had a layup there. Isaac Johnson known as an enforcer of sorts for the pullers. He's not gonna do anything like Derek Bugard once did for the while, but he's not afraid to get physical when necessary. Headed to Western Illinois. And one of the football crossovers. Play wide receiver with Zeke Rogers as quarterback. Isaac Johnson misses both. North two of seven. Brooklyn Center 10 of 11. That makes a difference. Patterson regains control but came up short on the shot. There were a couple of North bodies down low including number 32. Taylor Johnson in traffic. Marquise Holloman rips it away and it will stay Polar's ball. Sanders Smith attacks and scores. North getting a lot of balance in the first half from offense. And unable to get the roll was to here. Had a good look, just couldn't get it to drop. North loses control at Brooklyn Center. We'll get it back. Patterson. Faking the three to here. Runs into a double team. Prince, mid range, no. Almost tipped it in himself. Isaac Johnson. Pulls the hesitation move and will shoot free throws. I believe it will be one and one. It Foul will be charged to Douglas. And it is one and one. But Isaac Johnson has struggled. I believe he's two of four. He's the only one to make any free throws for the Polders. And throughout the Larry McKenzie era, free throws have not blended well with this Polders team for whatever reason. To Kai Hines back on the floor, number 13. Johnson makes both free throws this time. He's 4 of 6. And North holds a three point lead with one minute to go in the first half. A competitive game thus far. Sprinkles in trouble. Gets out of it. And Quentrell Douglas was left alone. As you know, when you double team, you're gonna leave someone else open. And Sprinkles did just that. Or I should say, recognized that and found Douglas. Isaac Johnson missed it. And Dakai Hines was hacked going up. He will shoot two with 29 seconds left in the first half. The foul is on Patterson, his second. <laughs> to Kai Hines. 
Averaging 4.3 points and four rebounds a game. He's not going to put up a lot of stats, but an integral part of this team and the coaching staff are impressed with their resilience. Brooklyn Center looks like they will hope for the final shot. Price, Prince takes the three and is off. But we have a foul away from the ball. And if it's on North, that means free throws for the Centaurs. Sanders Smith called for a push off. Only his first foul, but that means free throws are coming for Kakula Collins. Both teams with a short rotation thus far. And Collins gets on the board. Six seconds left, so North will have time to get a shot off. Collins splits. North with time. Sanders Smith for three. Pure. An emphatic finish for the first half. And the Polars will take a 39-35 lead to the locker room. They led by as much as 10. Brooklyn Center rallied to take the lead briefly and North hoping to close out and extend their record to six and one in a battle of five and one teams. Brooklyn Center are looking to avoid back-to-back -back losses. We'll take a break and come back with first half stats and analysis. You're watching the Above the Rim Classic North leads Brooklyn Center 39-35. And we rejoin you at North Community High School in the north side of Minneapolis as we continue our coverage of the Above the Rim Classic. A tight one between the number one team in Class A, Minneapolis North, and the number nine team in Class 2A, Brooklyn Center. North leads 39-35. North started on a 24-14 advantage. Brooklyn Center rallied to tie it. And it's been back and forth since then. Odell Wilson, the fourth, had 12 points. Simmered down a bit at the end of the first half, but he went off to a furious start. And Brooklyn Center, a quartet of eights from Devontae Prince, Rudwan Tahir, Quentrell Douglas, and Adrian Sprinkles. Both teams at five and one. North gets Red Lake tomorrow. Brooklyn Center gets Michelle Clark. Another group where is not happy about the amount of fouls called in the game with Red Lake, but that happens sometimes. I don't make those types of judgment calls in terms of the merit. I just respond to the situation at hand, but we're back to action here. No foul there as Sandra Smith went up. And it will stay Polar's ball. Wilson, oh that's not his range. Sandra Smith has it, but not open enough for a three. Johnson fouled and will not get the bounce. And they do not give him the shooting motion. So a side out here for Sander Smith. Minneapolis North, the defending Class A state champions. Their banner has not gone up yet. Not the traditional one as Taylor Johnson missed. Odell Wilson with another rebound and He's strong. Taylor Johnson on the back end. Wilson, spin move, finishes this time. Offensive rebounds lead to second chances, and Odell Wilson has provided plenty of them. 
But don't count out this Brooklyn center team. Pass deflected. The quick give and go, and Devontae Prince will shoot two. Prince, two of two, his first time up, averaging 14.2. Rebounds and 18 or 14.2 points, 8.2 rebounds a game, and a couple of assists. Brooklyn Center 11 of 13 from the free throw line in the first half, North 5 of 11. And as we noted, North not the most accurate free throw shooting team. Although Brooklyn Center has missed a few freebies as of late. Pickford with the steal and the finish. And Pickford gets on the board. So a three-point play in an unconventional way. And that makes it a three-point game, 41-38. Wilson, skip to Johnson. Goes up. Too strong. Rebound. Goes under the legs of Pickford and Johnson. Collects it and scores. Isaac Johnson up to 10. Patterson. Lost control. Isaac Johnson with the steal. Here he comes. And a quick timeout for Matthew McAllister. No, it was called by McKenzie. Well, that's interesting. Usually you don't call a timeout when your team's on the verge of a run, but I'm not going to question Larry McKenzie's acumen. As we noted, five state tournament titles, a member of the Coaches Association Hall of Fame, over 300 wins. He's a published author and Diehard Miami Dolphins fan, and I'm sure he's excited to see his hometown Dolphins back in the playoffs after what seemed like an eternity. And of course, the question will be, can anyone contain the juggernaut that is the Patriots? So Isaac Johnson... Adds his total to 12. And we should note that Jaquan Sanders-Smith is also another double-digit scorer coming into this game. He's averaging 11 and a half. The Brooklyn Center trying to reel in the margin, and that won't get it done. Taylor Johnson with the steal on the cross-court skip. Jaquan Sanders-Smith goes in for the layup. And he gets the deflection. So North on another run. Brooklyn Center withstood the last one. We'll see if they can do the same here. Patterson over to Sprinkles. Johnson swipes it away. Goes to Taylor Johnson on the league out. Not the prettiest pass, but it works. And now Brooklyn Center calls timeout. Well, Larry McKenzie didn't dampen his own run. I was wondering what would happen when you call a timeout. It didn't stop the rhythm at all. Minneapolis North builds their lead to 11. Sander Smith and Taylor Johnson up to nine points now.
We mentioned in the first half with North and the negativity about their blowout wins last year. Uh, when you're number one or when people see a 20, 30 point game, it's no different than in the state hockey tournament when one school dominates. People in the age of social media and immediacy, instant gratification, they'll look for something to be angry about and voice their opinion just to be heard. Sprinkles for three. Rattles out. Taylor Johnson with the rebound. That's going to be a charge on Isaac Johnson. We talked about North running into the obstacle that was Maranatha in the first couple of years of McKenzie's tenure. The year before Larry brought his crew from Holy Angels over, North was on the verge of closing. Most of you remember that. It gets brought up every year when North wins a state title or does well in football or basketball these days. Takai Hines has called for the foul. That will send Prince to the line for two. That narrative about North's resurgence comes up every year, and it's still a remarkable turnaround, but at some point, you got to move on and find something else. Bottom line, whether or not North wins, basketball in the north side of Minneapolis is fun to watch. Trent Witts mentioned his two favorite games was last year's meeting against Hopkins and the uh, triple overtime thriller with Johnson in the Twin Cities game. Both times North lost as Devontae Prince adds to his total. He's up to 11. And that's the important thing. Taylor Johnson, too soft. Wilson's there. And he pads his rebound and point totals. Pickford through the hole and will shoot two. And Brooklyn Center. Speaking of resurgences, as Pickford misses the front end, if the Centaurs can continue to sustain this, and they have the makings of doing so, they would provide a doorway to some unsung heroes. Pickford splits, Wilson cannot get the dunk. Taylor Johnson goes up no, and Wilson gets another put back. So he won't make the highlight reel. We have a foul on North. It's on Holloman. He's going to say we won't, Odell Wilson won't make the highlight reel on the dunk supercut, but he recovers and responds with the putback, and that's what you like to see out of your big name players. When they don't get the flashy play, do they follow through with it? And Wilson has no trouble doing so. He's up to 18 points. Or maybe Wilson intentionally missed so he could add to his rebounding numbers, i.e. teams. But North has to be mindful of the foul situation. They have five. And Brooklyn Center proving adept at the line. And a late foul there that will send Quentrell Douglas to the charity stripe, just as I talked about free throws. And if you're wondering how serious North takes their in-house event, I don't like to call it tournament because there's no playing game. As Douglas makes the front end, now McKenzie sent out a press release to myself and several other notable names in the Twin Cities trying to get coverage of this event. Not that he needs it. North with a state title and their history of basketball is quite attractive as Isaac Johnson shows that his three-point shot can be quite attractive as well. And the Polars extend the lead to 13, their largest. Douglas in trouble. Prince now in trouble. Escapes. 
Pickford tried the bounce pass into Sprinkles. Wilson wasn't going to have any of that. Isaac Johnson is deflected by Douglas, so no fast break, north side out. Sandra Smith out to Holloman. Long two is strong. Patterson with the rebound. Sprinkles. Kent weave through Holloman. Now he does on the spin move and the finish. Sprinkles showing his shiftiness. Isaac Johnson and one. The foul will be on Prince. So the two big names for Minneapolis North, performing like it. Isaac Johnson with 17, has a chance to make it 18, which would match Odell Wilson's point total. 58-45. Let's go, ladies. Isaac Johnson completes the three-point play. And North doing what they do best, finding ways to extend leads and bringing the pressure. They do not play like a Class A team, and that's why they don't have trouble getting high-quality schools to schedule them, Hopkins in particular. Caledonia said, we'll take you on. And the annual series with Minnehaha. Timeout, Brooklyn Center. They trail by 14 with 12.30 left in the second half. Red Lake players have seen enough and will head home for the evening. Again, re getting ready to take on Minneapolis North. And something that took place at halftime that we didn't record, but we wanted to acknowledge. It is Crystal Flynn's birthday. I will not give you the number. You will have to figure that out yourself. But when the North boys and girls teams aren't overlapping, as is the case with most conference games, they'll often attend each other's matchups. And that extends to the coaching staff. So. The North PA crew taking the time to acknowledge Crystal Flint's birthday. And Crystal, a long history here in Minnesota. You know her as a former Golden Gopher, went to an NCAA tournament, head coach here, and has two sons on the varsity team this year. Taylor Johnson to shoot two. And if his brother, I don't know if he came back yet from San Diego, but one way or another, I presume, his big brother will be watching this tape. Taylor Johnson joins the double-digit column. 61-45 is our score as North in position to pull away. Tried for another steal there, couldn't get it. To here, the shovel pass and a traveling violation. Sprinkles, step before he dribbled. That's the common traveling miscue. The Brooklyn Center losing their composure in terms of ball discipline.
Jameer Jackson making his first appearance for the Polars. We should note that the Polars TV team sweat out a one-point win over Robbinsdale Cooper. Isaac Johnson gets the offensive rebound and will go to the line for two. Johnson adds to his total and Johnson has found his stroke from the free throw line after some early mishaps He's doing quite nicely. And North has made five of five from the line in the second half. Pickford loses the ball again. North's defense swarming the Centaurs. And Nasir el with a drive in the finish gets his first points of this game. North up by 20. Remember, this is a four-point game at halftime. And nothing going in for the Centaurs as Collins came up strong on the layup. Elamin to Sanders Smith for three. Halfway in, but not all the way. Three, no. To here missed. And we're gonna have a foul on North. So that will send Douglas to the line for a one and one as North is in the penalty, but they do lead by 20. North outscoring the Centaurs 30 to 10. I should take that back, 26 to 10. My math still works. <laughs> For Brooklyn Center, we discussed some of their non-conference games. Grand Rapids should be a fun one. As Douglas Pats is total to 12. The Tri-Metro, we mentioned De La Salle. The heavy favorite to win 3A again. Fridley also got to state last year. You can't count them out. Wilson. Again. Wilson's pattern of missing and then putting back a miss continues. It doesn't do wonders for your field goal percentage. But second chance and rebounding are certain to get a boost. Kula Collins scoring for the Centaurs. Sanders Smith, long two. No good. And the rebound eventually goes into the hands of Prince. Nasir Lamine set himself up in time. So a charge on Prince. The foul is a third on Prince, but Brooklyn Center is staring at an 18-point deficit. North exceptional in making adjustments and wearing you out with their depth. Especially in the last couple of years. And so many high-quality opponents. Brooklyn Center, though, gets a steal and... Uh, Unable to control himself in time was Douglas. So Sanders Smith, he's strong, but Brooklyn Center can't control the rebound. <laughs> Taylor Johnson back on the floor for the pullers. And Wilson and Isaac Johnson have 20 each.
Wilson gets to El Amin, who gets the 14-footer to fall. Sierra Lamine up to four. Douglas in trouble. It will stay with the Centaurs. Larry McKenzie pleading his case to the official who was a well-known figure from his days at the Howard Pulley Pro-Am. He would officiate a lot of those games and is still involved as a high school referee. Patterson in trouble. Pickford bumped, throws up a tough one. Easy rebound for Marquise Holloman. Isaac Johnson. Lines up his shot, swish. Took him a moment, but Patience paid off. He's up to 22. And it looks like North will move to 6-1 and one without much difficulty. Pickford for three. That's short. And Rude one to here with the put back. Although his production has dwindled. Fade away for Johnson. That one goes in two. Isaac Johnson feeling it out there. He's up to 24. North still bringing the pressure, but they're called for the foul. Douglas to the line, but North in absolute control of this one. And Decoy Hines will sub in for the Pullers. Decoy, the twin brother of Decoy. To here, one and one gets the front end. Well, Brooklyn Center will take a hit as it appears they will drop back to back games, but there's still a lot of season left, and they know that. But they get the steal, well, at least for a moment. And Odell Wilson called for the foul, much to his displeasure. Brooklyn Center shooting 84% from the free throw line. North at 62 and a half, but that's about the only metric where Brooklyn Center is ahead. No, the foul was changed. It was charged to Pickford. And Matthew McAllister will get an explanation. Isaac for three. If that went in, I would have gone home. So after all that, it's still a 20-point margin. Patterson, that looks strong, and it is. He tried to deflect it away from DeCoy Hines. Couldn't do so. And the Brooklyn Center cheerleaders haven't had much to celebrate. Not a lot of reasons to celebrate tonight. They've been pretty stationary compared to North. But that's all right. Sander Smith weaving through the hole and laying it in. North all over anyone who has the ball. Trading the three is Devontae Prince. And another Brooklyn Center timeout with 7.28 left 
The Centaurs trail by 19. That three gives Prince 14. North hosted a picnic type celebration because when they won the state championship in basketball, it came on a record setting day in terms of temperatures, a rather balmy afternoon. And with them getting the 11 o'clock game, they have plenty of time to gather around. The championship was the first in 13 years for the boys program. It's a group with strong athletic and academic commitments, staples of Larry McKenzie coach programs. Something he has instilled from his time at Henry, his time at Holy Angels, and here with the North Polars. Engages in a lot of advice and wisdom on social media. And Devontae Prince swipes it away and slams it home. Devontae Prince with a little elevation. Well, there's the dunk. Maybe too little too late though for the Centaurs. They still trail by 17. Sanders Smith cannot get the bounce. Wilson was fouled following the rebound. Patterson picking up his third foul and North all over the boards tonight. Lane violation. Wilson breached the free throw line prematurely. But it may not matter here with North up by 18 with under seven minutes to play. Pickford out to Patterson for three. Yes! Lakai Patterson with his first field goal and could this give Brooklyn Center the momentum they've been searching for. Wilson, Brooklyn Center wanted to walk. Instead, Isaac Johnson was open. He can't hit. Wilson, another offensive rebound. And he takes it to the glass himself. Takes it to the rim, I should say. But we have a stoppage in play because Rudwan Tahir took a tumble and is slow to get up. Odell Wilson, the fourth, up to 23 points. Living up to his nickname. Anyone who has to face Minneapolis North will have a tough job protecting the rim against that guy. To here, returns to the bench. Looks like he's okay. To here, the 5'8 freshman guard, averaging 11.3 points per game, nearly four rebounds. A welcome contribution to the Brooklyn Center team. Pickford, blocked from behind by DeCoy Hines. Uh, 
And Pickford and Patterson have struggled. Patterson well under his average, as is Pickford. Patterson missing the three. But the high carom goes to Pickford. And Brooklyn Center swings the ball around, giving Adrian Sprinkles a chance for a second chance put back. He's up to 12. Sanders Smith weaves through once more. The way he can shake and bake to the basket is impeccable. Isaac Johnson almost stole it from behind. Patterson takes it himself. Add Wilson in there. Ball is live and picked up by Biggs. North in transition. Isaac Johnson will put it in calmly. He has 26. Pickford, the skip too high. And that's what North can do to you. Even when they're not guarding you closely, they can disrupt your rhythm, interfere with your cadence. A boatload of offense here in the second half. Marquise Holloman, no. Jameer Jackson can't get a second chance basket. Sprinkles needs help. And through a sloppy pass that was stolen by Holloman, who will take it himself. Marquise Holloman with four. Holloman, a role player for this North team. And Sprinkles will shoot three as he drew the foul on Decoy Hines, but again, inconsequential. North with 46 points in this half. Brooklyn Center with just 28. A big run early in the second half, vanquished any thought of a Brooklyn Center comeback. But again, this is a team on the rise. They have a game tomorrow with Michelle Clark. A chance to end that losing streak there, and even if that doesn't happen, they have plenty of more opportunities. Park Center will be another barometer for their potential. Johnson struggling over the last couple of years. And the Tri-Metro Conference has a few high-quality teams. We mentioned De La Salle and Fridley. St. Croix Lutheran struggling a bit, but they were in that two-way tournament a year ago. Traveling violation. So no basket for Decoy Hines. And Tahir will return to the floor, as will Sanders Smith. 85-65 our score. North well on their way to going to 6-1, and one, but oh, I didn't see this. We have a stoppage in play. There is a player down for the Polars. And as deep as they are, they do not want an injury, especially with a big game against Red Lake tomorrow. And the injured player is Jamiri Jackson, number 21, the 6'4 senior forward. Jackson. Oh, Averaging six points a game. And while they examine him, we mentioned Odell Wilson's rebounding. He's got to have a double-double tonight, averaging nearly nine a game. Coming into this, he was shooting 61% from the floor. And it's going to be fun to see him battle for those of you who will watch that game. By the time this gets uploaded, it will have taken place. But to see a guy like him go up against Rob McLean should be a lot of fun. 
Isaac Johnson shooting 42%. Not the most accurate, but Isaac is relentless. Isaac helping his free throw numbers out a little bit as they're still looking at Jameer Jackson. He averages six points and 3.2 rebounds a game. And now he gets up. Hopefully he's all right. Still doubling over. And he will head to the locker room for further examination. And here's a player you don't see much of for North, Elijah Campbell. And he'll be able to foul. Both teams in the bonus. Uh, but Realistically, we're in stat padding time. Devontae Prince will be a figure to watch in the days ahead. And who knows what will happen in 2A. But Brooklyn Center has an opportunity to make some noise and maybe take on the Titans of Minnehaha who figured to, as Campbell loses it, who figured to have a good chance of making state this year. St. Corey Lutheran took that spot a year ago, but they don't have Ade Murky there anymore. Caledonia with Owen King. They won another football championship. Looking to add to their basketball trophy case. Devontae Price up to 18 points. Three on the way, a deep one, and Lukai Patterson is pure. That pushes his total to eight, but again, his lack of contributions offensively really hurt the Polars, or really hurt the Centaurs and their efforts to get an upset win here in the north side of Minneapolis. Prince will have a chance at two more. Prince has been active doing about as much as he can but Brooklyn Center was bogged down by that massive run North put up earlier in the second half McCollister can take some solace in Brooklyn Center's ability to get to the free throw line, but they'll have some work to do. Patterson drains the runner. Well, Lukai Patterson is rebounding somewhat after a two-point start. He's scored eight in the last few minutes. Campbell off the mark from three, and the rebound goes off the head of Tahir, so it will stay with the Polars. Oh, nice to see Lukai Patterson hanging in there. Uh, 
Sanders Smith missing the three. And Brooklyn Center trying to make a game of this. Patterson goes up and it's too strong. And that's a tough thing when you're trailed by as much as they do as Campbell will get the fast break layup. When you're trailing big, everything has to go right. You can't have any empty possessions. And North taking advantage of a no restricted zone. Decoy Hines drawing the charge. So if North scores another point, it would be the second time this season they have scored 90 or more. Their most recent game, they cracked the 100 point mark against Fair, 105 43, a game where Marquise Holloman will break the 90 point barrier, but Fair is simply overmatched. You hope that they'll use such games to build up their program in the years to come, but right now, it uh, wasn't even close. And Quentrell Douglas to the line for two more. As the North girls file on out. They had a practice earlier tonight. Again, an extended holiday break, but they'll be back. Douglas missing both free throws. And a push off called on the Polars as fans start to file out. And part of that has to do with a full day of games tomorrow. So even though there's only two varsity games, they also have C-Squad and JV matchups as part of this above the rim event. And taking the floor to close this out is Trayvon Holloman, number three, the younger brother of Marquise, the seventh grader. And Dante and Alicia were telling me about this kid's potential and the North staff, I know, ecstatic to have him on the varsity roster. Everyone is expecting him to be a bona fide stud as an athlete in the years to come. But he's only a seventh grader, has plenty of time. So everyone will reconvene tomorrow on what should be another entertaining pair of games as Holiday Tournament Mania takes hold here in Minnesota. Plenty of boys and girls events. Patterson missing a three. And you can hear a pin drop now as everyone files out. And Prince drains the rainbow tray. That puts him up to 22. Marquise out to Campbell. North not going to be in a hurry to do anything silly here. Campbell pulls up short on the two. Rebound Hines. Pass is skipped. Holloman. Drains the runner, Trey Juan Holloman. With a nifty dose of athleticism. Well, that's a couple more points and perhaps a bid to maybe get some scoring records down the road. He's four of seven on the season. A few points here, a few points there. Big start, Patterson, deep three. Isaac Johnson with 26. Odell Wilson, the fourth with 23. Norse dynamic duo stepping up once more. And Jaquan Sanders-Smith and Taylor Johnson shipping in nicely. Brooklyn Center looks like they're gonna run out the clock. 
Or try to lull North to sleep. To here will fire the three and miss. And for the Centaurs, Devontae Prince has 22. Well, Trey Juan Holloman wants an encore. He'll fire the three and will not get it. And North will run out the clock here. 95 to 76, the final. North goes to six and one, winning their sixth straight match. Brooklyn Center falls to five and two. Isaac Johnson leads the way with 26. Odell Wilson with 23. Taylor Johnson with 11. Jaquan Sanders Smith with 13. Those are your notables for the Polars. Brooklyn Center led by 22 points from Devontae Prince, 14 from Adrian Sprinkles, 12 each from Rudwan Tahir and Quentrell Douglas, and 10 from Luke High Patterson. But North's defense was just too much in the second half. They won on a big run, got up big, and never looked back. It was a competitive, close affair in the first half. Different story in the second half, but that's the power and the might of Minneapolis North as they continue their quest to repeat in Class A. For our entire crew, I'm Mike Beating, bidding you adieu from Minneapolis North and the Above the Rim Classic. We'll see you next time.